What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Collector Beard Reactions. This go around, we'll be taking a look at top 10 things you didn't know the UK invented. I always like watching stuff like this to take and learn a little bit of thing, you know, learn a little something. Of course, it's not going to be, you're not going to have like the full story of everything. You're just going to have a top 10 who's who, what's what, and all that good stuff. So, yeah, before we go any further, like, subscribe, notification bell. Let's go on ahead and get into it. <clears throat> Let's make history. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 things you didn't know were invented in Britain. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we've picked out some of Blighty's best inventions and ranked the ones which we think are often overlooked. Number 10, Chocolate Bar. Well then, I've been eating a lot of tub their own. I've eaten four, and they've got two white ones left. Wait, so the chocolate bar was invented in the UK or in Great uh, in England? Like, I'm, whoever thought of making a chocolate bar, um, props to them, because yeah, I don't like them as much as the dark ones. Before Mars bars, Dairy Milk, Twix, Twirl, or Toffee Crisp came Fry's chocolate cream, predated only by bittersweet treats, including an innovative 1847 effort by Joseph Fry himself. Chocolate cream was the first bar to be widely distributed, hitting shelves in 1866. Make the moment last with Fry's chocolate cream. Dairy free with a fondant center, the idea quickly caught on with a certain John Cadbury starting mass production soon afterwards. Then came Henry Nestle, Rudolf Lindt, and Milton S. Hershey. Chocolate! Chocolate! <laughs> chocolate! Number nine, postage stamp. To, <coughs> for, to a postage stamp. No. In fact, a postage stamp is legal. Okay, that makes sense. Stamp tax and stuff like that, that the colonies, that makes sense that you, uh, uh, England was the first one to come up with that. Legal tender. A bus driver would have to accept that. Here's one to write home about. The heady history of the postage stamp boasts a series of major players, with most of the significant changes happening in London. Ah, uh, yes. There it is. The penny black. Sir Roland Hill is widely credited with creating the self-adhesive item we take for granted today, as well as a regulated cost system, introducing the first stamps, the penny black and the two pence blue in 1840. Both bear an image of Queen Victoria and both are worth a pretty penny today. So everybody who wants to send a letter will have to lick my face. Number eight, Viagra. What's the matter? What's the matter? You just took a Viagra to have sex with me. Well, I, I, I thought it would make it better. Sex is something of a specialist subject in British history. First, the vibrator was conceived by an 1880s physician who sought a cure for female hysteria, and then male impotence was solved largely. Wait, 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 wait. The vibrator was made to cure female hysteria? <clears throat> Has he met females? There's like no real cure for that. I'm just picking. It's a joke. It's a joke. But uh, that's still, that's kind of interesting. The 18-somethings, the, that's when the vibrator was, in, like, how, why would you slip that into something like this? Well, wait, wait, hold on, slipping in. Now, anyways, why would you take, in, like, that's, some about random piece of information, um, but Viagra being made in the UK, I, I don't see why you would, I don't know, I guess they're trying to take and slip in some extra tidbits. Delete by accident. The effects of sildenafil, or Viagra, were discovered in 1991, when a group of Kent-based Pfizer employees were researching a proposed new treatment for angina. But rather than writing the heart, the product precipitated other noticeable <laughs> changes. The findings were quickly turned into a pill, sparing bedroom blushes worldwide. You can't. took Viagra. Number 7, Table Tennis. In truth, the UK is responsible for, or it had a major hand in, the development of countless sports. Badminton, that was us. Cricket, obviously. Rugby, football, snooker, and bowls, all at least partly British. Squash was invented at Harrow, netball at Hampstead College, and modern golf is Scottish. But we've singled out table tennis. For the first time, a father and son are playing each other in the world table tennis final, and neither of them are Chinese. An Olympic sport since oh, oh. 1988, it began in Victorian England as a popular parlor game. Using improvised nets and paddles, players played over a dining table, often serving golf balls to their opponents. Somebody said, world peace. 
Could you imagine being hit in the uh, head by accident, taking miss, being hit in the head with a golf ball instead of a ping pong? Yeah, that would, might leave a welt. It was in our hands, but all I did was play ping pong. Number six, flushing toilets. While there is evidence that early civilizations used water to sanitize toilets, it wasn't until Tudor England that a recognizable flush system emerged. Oh God, I beg you, please, if you make this water go down, I will sit at your feet and I will serve you for all of eternity. Said John Harrington <laughs> led the way, installing a basic model for Elizabeth I <coughs> at Richmond Palace. But it was almost 200 years before this throne became a household convenience. How about a courtesy flush over there? <laughs> South Yorkshire's Thomas Crapper perfected the U-Bend in 1880. At the Great Exhibition in 1851, purpose-built WCs were all the rage. Number five, guillotine. Though best known for cutting through- How did you go from toilet to guillotine? Like for real? French history, this deadly device was actually a British idea. Beheading was a popular way of executing criminals in the Middle Ages, but all that wielding of swords soon got tiresome. While the guillotine was named after a French doctor, early versions are recorded as far back as the 1200s in Northern England and Scotland. The Halifax gibbet featured a crude axe head on a wooden board, while legend says the Scottish maiden was used to behead an earl who helped install it. Number four, jet engine. Historically, war forces ideas. I feel the need, the need for the speed. Need for speed. First, the military tank was devised by the Brits for World War I, supposedly inspired by a H.G. Wells story. Then came pioneering advances in the skies. The you know, the, the, an H.G. Wells story inspiring a tank, that makes sense. That or a Jules Verne story. That would be, like, that would make total sense to get inspiration for a tank from those two. Um, it, but the jet engine, like Rolls-Royce and all them taking in, you know, the, the engines that are made for uh, jet engines uh, or for jets that were flown in World War II. That makes sense, it being a British invention. The first patent for the jet engine was filed by Sir Frank Whittle in 1930, but Whittle's revolutionary ideas weren't realized until midway through the Second World War, by which time a German designer had already adapted his plans. Furthermore, Whittle's ideas were also shared with America, meaning Britain missed its head start for their commercial applications too. To gain control, you gotta lose control, right? I can't hear you. Number three, IVF. Introduced in the 70s, in vitro fertilization flipped some of our most fundamental ideas about human biology. How many times have you tried now? Three? Nine. The last two were in vitro. Developed for the most part by Patrick Steptoe and Robert G. Edwards, it proved that a successful pregnancy could be initiated outside of the human body. Louise Brown was the world's first so-called test tube baby, conceived in a petri dish and born in Oldham. Well, given your situation, the options with the greatest chances for success would be surrogacy or insemination using a sperm donor. The birth raised ongoing ethical questions, but the procedure has become an increasingly available option with more than 250,000 IVF babies already born in the UK. What does that mean? It means that my guys won't get off their barca loungers and you have a uterus that is prepared to kill the ones that do. Number two, digital audio player. Otherwise known as portable media player and MP3 player, or most famously, an iPod. You be Why don't you just lead with an iPod? Forgiven for thinking that these devices came straight out of Silicon Valley, but no. Nope. The gadgets were first thought up by Kane Kramer, a London-based serial inventor who designed the IXI in 1979. She's making playlists. Jesus Christ. She likes to listen to MP3s when she hunts. Similar in size to a cigarette packet, with a small screen and four navigation buttons, the blueprints are uncanny. But Kramer's patent expired a decade later, leaving others free to act on his ideas, and that they did. Number. See, that's a problem with <clears throat> like copyright. Copyright should take an end in like 15, 20 years, 10, 15, 20 years, like for real, because patents take an end in like 20 years, 25 years. So copyright should do the same thing. That way. You know, after a while, if somebody wants to take and use it for for another reason, they're free to, because that just makes sense. <laughs> you can do it with patents. Do it with copyright. That makes, that's too much sense, probably. Number one, motion pictures. We finish with Britain's mass of media breakthroughs. Thomas Wedgwood, son of the pottery pioneer, experimented with early attempts at photography, while the Scotsman, John Logie Baird, 
was the first to demonstrate TV, but Edward Muybridge takes top spot, thanks to his modestly named 1870s study, A Horse in Motion. Aimed to determine how a horse gallops, it featured a series of silhouettes viewed through another of Edward's inventions, a zoopraxoscope. That was an early film projector, and the study was a precursor for motion pictures and the movie industry. Do you agree with our So, there we have it, top 10 things you didn't know uh, the UK invented. I find the list pretty interesting. Some of the, some of the things that are on there, like some of the things that were even slipped in um, as part of something else. Just kind of highlighted exactly how much, in my opinion, was uh, invented in the UK, which you don't think about in everyday life, or at least, you know, most people don't. So, it, it's this was pretty interesting. Um, Y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.